uh, the difference between warriors and soldiers. Mm -hmm. We got a society of everybody wants to be warriors. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to be soldiers, right? right. And right. that destroys the ability to organize right. and to win wars, especially from those who are losing. Right. You understand yeah. me? So it's like, I'm gonna get, I want to get your definition of a warrior and a soldier, but I'll give you my breakdown. Okay. So, you know, a warrior is somebody more so defined by his instincts, mm -hmm. right? Like if you got a warrior, a warrior gonna more so have that long hair, you mm -hmm. understand me, which is his antennas that attaches to nature, connecting his intuition mm -hmm. to learn how to move. He, right. he's, he's more so moving by a code of conduct. Right. You understand me? That's his warrior's way on how he's going to go about finding and, and living in life. Mm -hmm. uh, but then that soldier is one more so he takes orders. So that soldier, you go see him with the cut. Right. right in the military they make you submit to get a cut for discipline right, right. And it's right. more self-control because right. it's not about individual perspective right right, right, right. And individuality but what you right. add to the collective right so it's a sacrifice to where nah <laughs> i don't have to agree with the order but i'm going to submit to it right 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 and it doesn't take any away from the masculine entity and energy because it takes more energy to submit than it does rebel oh yeah for sure. you understand me it's especially a for a powerful person right because a person may tell you the right order, but you got a disagreement. Yeah. But it ain't about you because there's a general, then there's the soldier. There's rules. So it's like right now we got a lot of people who want to be warriors when they should be soldiers, which will push them in line and position and it allow the whole organization to move forward and grow. But we deal with a warrior, which can be more emotional. Mm -hmm. A soldier, devoid your emotion, right. cut off all your personality at right. this moment and just right. follow the goddamn order so we can win and the war. from being an exceptional soldier, that your actions as that soldier can elevate you to that warrior position. 100%. You know, you've earned it. Well, well at, at, to the general position. Right, exactly. You understand to the me? General, exactly. You've earned it legitimately. I learned my best, I learned my best ways in uh, development of my character through mm -hmm. listening to other men. You understand indeed, me? Indeed, when, yeah. when I had to go through FOI training and I got a drill yeah. and I don't want to and it's mm -hmm. the hot sun and I want to kill these niggas who giving the order. Right, nah, <laughs> I, I got you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> That's discipline and, and control. Yeah. I got a I got a big homie, his name Leroy, Leroy Coleman out in Arizona. Um, his nickname was Man. And he was just that, a man, yeah. you know what I'm saying? He taught me so much. Like he went through this period where um, he almost went to the joint for life, right? For a murder, a murder he didn't commit, mm. right? Well, one of his enemies. And he knew who did it, but he stuck to a code that we all live by because we was in the streets. You know what I'm saying? That's what you do. People on the outside can call it stupid all they want, but if you're in this world, you follow these rules, right? And he did that. So after about nine months, he got exonerated because they found the killer's T-shirt mm. and the DNA. So thank God for that. And I watched, he was a menace, bro. But I watched him literally, he didn't say, I need to, I need to get right, I need to change my life. Mm -hmm. He didn't say none of that. He just did it gradually over time. And I watched, I observed. I never even told him this to this day. I learned so much from you, but I, I watched him. His, it wasn't his words, his actions taught me so much. And I follow suit. So there's been plenty of times in my life where I played subordinate. I got under somebody that was greater than me at that time. Right. And I learned a lot, right? Because when, you, when you're the best, when you think you're the best, you, you're not learning anything. Right. You already got it figured out. Right. And I never want to have that position, man. Like, I have people, like, I'm surrounded by a lot of beta people who are very wise with a lot of things. Right. And they have a lot of, they have a lot of things on them that I wish I had that I just don't, right? Like, man, you're so nice, bro. Like, how do you do that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I know how I'm perceived a lot, but it is what it is. I'm, I'm who I am. But, um, and I have no qualms with who I am, but sometimes I do want, you know, I, I hear, oh, man, they just, they was intimidated. I'm like, for what? Like, I'm nice. Yeah. I'm saying, I'm nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, scare them motherfuckers. <laughs> I'm nice, man. <laughs> Love me. <laughs> nah, but it's all good, though. It's like everybody, <laughs> you know, everybody, everybody has a, a, a role in this movie, bro. Yeah. And, but when it come back to the rules, like what you're saying, rules are so important, man. Like, we are, man, it's crazy. I, I like t talking about matters of evolution because it helps understand why things are the way they are. And all the other species of humans that we beat out because we had the ability to develop these, con these abstract concepts, like rules, right? And all agree that, yeah, this should mean that. It allows us to give us order, you know what I'm saying? So they could never get out of chaos. They were stronger than us. They were way more alpha than us, you know what I'm saying? More powerful, but 
we were we were the the uh, maybe the fact that we were you talking about in what context early humans versus like other pro magnon man astropithecus uh homo habilis homo erectus and, and we were homo sapiens sapien we were the runts you know what i'm saying they were like other shorter stubby humans but we were runts right and but it made us have to think more you know what i'm saying use this instead of just like physical there's a book that i read that i really love it's called body mind mastery by dan Millman, and it's somewhat of a sports psychology book but it's very practical and you can apply it to every aspect of life but it does talk about kids right when kids are playing sports and it, it, it gave reference to like the big kids that always got picked out the gate they usually burn out like early the smaller kids that didn't get to play as much they watched and they got good mentally you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying and their bodies are preserved and they they tend to go on to have the long careers i mean look at a floyd mayweather you know what i'm saying this guy fought well into his 40s at the top of the sport you know what i'm saying so um when we don't default to just our physicality and brute and 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 power and aggression you know we can we, we can have a a more quality of life right well see but and that's key because masculinity is not defined by physicality right you understand me that's that's machismo you understand me right. that's going into hyper masculinity yeah. right Defining yourself by these features and saying that this is what gives you value and power. And it's dominance. a low level le yeah. uh, of masculinity. So the mind is the most masculine thing a man Indeed. has. Indeed. You understand Indeed. me? And, and that's why you go to prison yards, it'd be a small guy running that shit because he mm -hmm. got the mind to tell everybody mm -hmm. else the muscle how to move. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And, well, I, and not in every sense. I, yeah, because I we, you know. We know not every sense. When, I've been, when, I, when I'm in there, I would think about homies of mine that's super big. I'm like, yeah. Big Rob, like you be straight in there, bro. Like certain. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's a, it's a. That's really animal kingdom. And, and, and some of those are actual warriors, though. Yeah, yeah. Because, cause some of the big men, since they don't know how to fight and they don't haven't been in many fights, they right. afraid of the pain. Yeah, and that's, yeah, that's true. So that's they don't want to go through that. But I seen, I seen some really, really formidable dudes. You know what I'm saying? Oh no, it's so our greatest warriors is locked and up. And think about when Mike Tyson was in prison. They asked him. There's one interview like, "Were you in solitary confinement?" He's like, no. Did you have any fights? Not yeah, one. No. Nobody fuck with yeah. Mike. You know what I'm saying? Because that's real. And but there, he also was like, bro, I'm, I'm like, this is good guys in there crazier than me. I wasn't trying to fight nobody. Cause right. They had but, fucking but stabbed I as quick that as they part, can think. Yeah. But I guarantee he would have been fine. Not if, yet, if he yeah. was with this, if he was, if his mind wasn't right, he'd, he'd still been fine. He'd been in there way longer, but he'd have been fine. He's too formidable. And yeah, if his mind was on domination. Yeah, and you gotta think, man, a person like that, a winner, somebody who's who's tapped into winning, you know, he's trying to figure out how to win against the best in the world at training what he does. Right. So you in prison with dudes that's just tough. It's yours if you want it. But that's who wants that. You right. know what I'm saying? But that's still the politics of the of the mental alchemy that goes right. in there. Right, that's true. You understand me? It's like cause two guys at the same uh, uh, same built, you mm -hmm. understand me? Which one gonna run this shit? One mm -hmm. that actually has the mental capability to run it. Right. You understand right. me? He gonna outthink this other guy easy. He may right. play politics in there to get somebody knocked off their position. Right. He might That's not real. even have to touch him. That's real. You understand me? He may send a little guy to go in yeah. there and do something to yeah. him where he didn't even see it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the part of like, that's what we dealing with, right? right? In today's society, men that find themselves at dominant positions in life and power positions, they got there not from physicality, mm -hmm. right? Look at the difference between you got Francis and Guno. He the powerful puncher in the world, yeah, right. But Dana White worth five hundred million dollars. Nah, for real. You understand yeah, nah, me? It's, it's, a, it's a problem over there. Yeah, that yeah. UFC got a big issue. Dana White is the biggest pimp on the planet. Oh my God, bro! They paid what's the brother from the UK, uh, the boxer that Anthony lost Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua fifteen million to not fight, <laughs> and yeah. he got paid more than almost all the UFC fighters. The whole roster. The whole year. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for the roster, it's that was that was it's less bad. than a million. It's bad, man. It's bad over there, but, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's a classic case of, of course, you know, first you get opportunity and you got right. people, he, he was starting the salt mines and things of that nature, yeah. but it's like, where we at right now, when you're dealing with people that are savvy in business, business mm -hmm. is warfare, number one. 100%. That's what most people don't look at it. Economics right. and business is right. warfare. Right. You can go dominate the people by bringing in institutions that they don't understand, right? right? No matter how strong in those people is, unless they willing to physically, violently oppose you, yeah. then you go dominate those people with your systems. Right, right. right? But you know, interesting, interesting thing about Dana White, 
Dana White keeps tough dudes with him. Like I've heard stories, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, he so got to. it's so it's you, so well, you're not gonna pimp the greatest fighters in the world right. and not keep killers with but you. But even getting to where he's at, so here's the thing that that I'm con cognizant of, like you need the systems, you need that business savvy, you need all of those attributes right there. But it helps to have the other stuff too. The army, the army, the physical, the the mind. See. It's not even just physical. It's like mentally being down to go there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When lose a draw, we're going there. Yeah. I don't care if you, you, you might whoop me, but I'm biting a chunk out your face. Yeah. It's, it's not going to be easy. It's not yeah. going to be fun for you. You know what I'm saying? So people who are down to turn that up, to turn that on, and, we, you know, it's been a lot of discussion about this. I've been talking to a lot of people about this, too, because you let Jordan Peterson say, dangerous men are good for society. A good man is a very, very dangerous man who has that under voluntary control. They're like, oh, yeah. But when I say it, they're like, no. No, dangerous, no. dangerous black men are good for society right. specifically. I'm going to just exactly. say that. That's, so that's it's, always been my thesis. Yeah, man. And dangerous so, so people don't get it misconstrued is like people with the capacity for violence, for, to, to harm others, but not out there just abusing that, right? Not being a tyrant. You, you tuck that away and you use it if necessary to defend yourself or your family or your loved ones or anything of, uh, for justice, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so your definition of dangerous is people that are willing to live, die, and kill for a cause. No, people that's willing to live, die, and kill regardless, you know what I'm saying? But, because dangerous don't, is not good or bad, but to, be, to have the capacity of being dangerous but so having the willingness to kill is your, your area of danger. Yeah, you, you, you know, or, or get over, harm people, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because look, all's fair in war, but also all's fair in love as well. So when it comes to you securing a situation for your, your loved ones, sometimes other people get hurt. You know what I'm saying? All right. So. All right. So I'm going to play God's advocate on this, um, because when it comes to the violence aspect, right? and being dangerous and your capacity to be able to commit the ultimate violence, which is murder, right? That does make a man dangerous. Then you have the courageousness that makes a man dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. His willingness to speak out, right? Even though he may die, right? Or to do things even though he may die, right? right? That's another level of dangerousness. And bravery. Bravery. Yeah. Because you have to ask yourself, right, when it comes to, you know, movements and, and, and cultures and societies changing, right, more societies and things have changed and more people have died because of what was said by the tongue. That's true. Oh, you yeah, understand sure, me? That's, sure. that's one of the most dangerous yeah. things that 100%. a person can utilize yeah. is their voice right. and their mind and the capacity. That's why I said, for me, it's, it's to be able to live, die, and kill for a cause. Mm -hmm. And I say cause because the being able to point that energy in a direction mm -hmm. is what makes it dangerous. Right. It's like in the streets of America right now, mm -hmm. <clears throat> there are hundreds of thousands of black men who have killed before. Right. You understand me? And are willing to kill again. Mm -hmm. But that collective energy is not pointed towards any cause that we can utilize as a culture Correct. in a manner of building out some type of excellence, a system, an institution. Mm -hmm. In fact, those same black men would probably be afraid to get on the platform and say something. 100%. Right? They'd, they'd be afraid of the cop roll up on them right. and they tuck in and run in. And right. They're afraid of the system, right. but they're willing to kill. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, that makes them dangerous in a certain aspect, but it limits. Mm -hmm. You understand me? How powerful they are. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's a difference between the, the dangerousness and the power because I want black men to be dangerous in a capacity that they are fearless, they are willing to speak truth to power, they are willing to live and die for a cause, you understand me? And they're right. willing to give up their energy for, you understand me, the continuity of us growing out this, uh, uh, or some sort of institution and agenda. Yeah, it's interesting, bro, you say that because you are right. So I don't even see them as dangerous when they can only kill themselves and each other. You know, it's very, it's, it's really like they're doing the enemy's work, right? They are. And they know that it ain't as bad because they don't like us anyway. 
they're not, you know, I know I can't do that to that white boy over there. I'm going to do it to you, nigga. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because they know our life isn't valued as Correct. much as Correct. the rest of the dominant society. And we just need a shift in that perspective, man. They, they need to hear people like us, people like EYL, M500, Wall Street Trapper. Like, they need to see us in these high levels, not switching it up, acting like we ain't who we are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Talking to us like we that talk. Part. You feel me? So they need to see that. And they need to see, they need to see how, you know, white people respect us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They need to see how, like, they don't see it, man. That's it. However, I do, I do feel like there is a shift in the culture happening. You know what I'm saying? Look at how many people, like, you, you posted a list the other day of, like, why y'all not posting these yeah. black uh, uh, creators. But that's cool. Like, fuck them. Mm -hmm. We all posting ourselves and each other and all yeah, that. Yeah. So you didn't have that five, ten years ago. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like even with me, like over the years that I've been in my space, very vocal about things, bro, the blacks in my industry, it's pathetic. Pathetic. I would I would see the shit that they put. I'd be like, yo, shake my head. Like, what what? You know what I'm saying? So I love seeing you, seeing Cheat Code TV, seeing all these brothers. And it's not all about political issues, no. Because what the, the, the real advocacy and the real war that we need to be fighting is here, is, is within ourselves. Yeah. So each person is out there um, representing a healthy lifestyle, representing financial freedom, representing just different things, different aspects to make us grow and to make us live good lives. And that's what... That's what needs to be injected into the minds of our people, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And we're and we are we have that somewhat. Everybody got swag, got got dope energy. So, you know, the entertainment factor is there too. You know what I'm saying? Because that's we're black people are, are an expressive, creative people. We need that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So we're they're getting these messages in really cool ways. So I do feel a huge shift in society, and it's only going to be more. Like I feel like in another three, four years, it's going to be triple, quadruple us. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I love that, you know, so the shift is happening. And here's the thing too, bro. You can't, social media is great. Let me, let me bring it back to 20, 2012. That's when like Instagram really popped, right? So think about what used to be just, just the standard of beauty in this country, right? It was Eurocentric based. It was skinny and no not to, 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 to Euro, Europeans, but there was a standard because they controlled the media. They controlled the magazines, the people on TV. Right. It was one image of beauty, right? And I'm not going to say they're not beautiful, but it was one element of beauty, right? Now you have Instagram, so everybody got a, is a voyeur into their world. You see, you see these, these black, these Latino women, these, these curvy women with beautiful big lips, hips, right? And what happened? There's white girls now that look like, I, I can't tell if they're white or not. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, and I'm bringing that up as an example of you cannot suppress the natural state of things, but for so long. Well, you, you know, know everything has to come back to a point of origin. And it comes, right, and it's coming <laughs> out. It's like, I love it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love it. When people get mad at like, white girls braiding their hair, I'm like, they paying homage to you. Like, who cares, you know what I'm saying? Well, I it's, mean, I get aspects of the cultural appropriation aspect that black women argue saying that they are now able to benefit from things that were a detriment to us. Right. Mm -hmm. Not being able. Number one, it's like even the modern industry is starting to change. Well, right. they want black women because they got some braids or they in this niche or that mm -hmm. niche. But when a white woman is celebrated from doing something that is historically a black right. woman style. Yeah. Right. And then black women have still not been able to get that celebration. Right. It's like they don't, like it's, it's a kick in the face. See, you understand. Me? But that's that's being in it, looking at it. But when you take a bird's eye view, you look down from above. And you think about history. I think about history. Like, my life is predicated on the fact that I'm going to die. So every move I'm, I'm making, I'm thinking about my children. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about how people remember me, remember us, things like that. So when you look at it from a, a bigger perspective, yeah, of course, it hurts right now. It's a little uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? But 10 years is going to be a lot different. 20 years is going to be a lot different. And then you're going to have these stories when, like, yo, this is when, you know, black people were getting fired for having dreadlocks. You know what I'm saying? All of this shit. But white people, we weren't, you know, you hear the stories, you see the evolution of it, and people will really see it for what it was, you know what I'm saying? And listen, we're living, we're, ne we're never dying, bro. We live in an age of video content, right? So we have, there's video of us talking about these things, 
in a hundred years, maybe it's a hundred years ago, right now, yeah, we're hundred yeah. years in the future. Yeah. They're hearing us talk about these things, right? So it's beautiful. So we, it's up to us to rewrite history and make it uh, more accurate. And a lot of us are doing that. So like, I really appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? And Likewise. I appreciate a lot of brothers. Like, I, it feels so good. To, I'd be so proud seeing my brothers shining. Yeah. Speaking intelligently, looking good, being fly, inspiring people, teaching people how to make money, teaching people how to get in shape. You know what I'm saying? So this is such a valuable thing that we're in right now. This is such an, uh, a special time that we're in. It's hard to appreciate it because we're in it. Yeah. But, you know, you know we, I, I, it, 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 I think, well, for me, I can appreciate it because growing up, the type of conversations we having right now has mm -hmm. always been you know, the, the table conversation, right. the, the, the chill conversation with my brothers has yeah. always been that type of cypher. Mm -hmm. And then there were certain points where, you know, I would get admonished from regular society for speaking like this, right. for being a masculine man, Same. right? For being yeah. a masculine black Muslim man. Like for mm -hmm. me, it's like, it's the ultimate minority to be honest, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but at the end of the day, we always decided to conquer and make space for ourselves. And it was like the very things that I'm celebrated for now, I was hated four years ago. Right. You understand yeah. me? My political positions, my right. social positions, all of them. Mm. Now, things that people be like, they love me for. Are oh, you talking that God energy now? Yeah. It's like, it's, but I go back to yeah. my childhood I it was up until then. adulthood. Yeah. They was mad, right. big angry. So nah, bro, I get to see year to year changes and, and shifts. It's interesting because, you know, when I moved to the West Coast, like it was way different. Like, I'm like 18, 19, and I'm saying, peace God, peace Allah. You know what I'm saying? I'm self Lord and Master. I'm saying, you know, I'm, I'm communicating. Yeah. There would be little pockets of uh, brothers. You know what I'm saying? But I was a weirdo. 